Hi everyone, I'm Erica from Nitty Gritty Science, and today's video is about interactive notebooks, specifically science interactive notebooks, which I think are one of the best learning tools to be used with students, whether they're in a classroom setting or whether they're doing independent learning and distance learning. I'm gonna be using examples out of my Earth Science interactive notebook here, and I'm gonna be going through what you should be looking for when you are using science interactive notebooks with your students, what interactive notebooks are, and why I think they can be so successful. Now, a lot of interactive notebooks are out there. I'm gonna just kind of pop up here so you can see. Now, there are interactive notebooks which say they're interactive notebooks, but they're full of activities. They're full of cutouts, foldables, printables, um, everything on this side, but they are lacking one of the most important aspects of an interactive notebook, which are the notes or the information presented to the student, which goes on what is called our input side. If the interactive notebooks that you are looking at do not come with notes, do not come with information, then it is not a true interactive notebook. The interactive notebook component, and where that word comes from when we're talking about interactive notebooks, is that students are actually interacting with the notes. They're interacting with the information they just learned in order to apply them to do the activity on the left hand or the output side. All right, so if there is um, an activity over here, but there's nowhere to pull that information from for the student, and they're just cutting, pasting, and they are just uh, writing down rote information, then they are not applying any information. They're not pulling information from anywhere that they just learned. They're just doing some cut and paste activity over here. So you definitely wanna make sure the activity is applied from the information they just learned from their notes. Now, I have set up um, my interactive notebook, each chapter is broken down into sections. Most interactive notebooks do this because it's kind of called a chunking method, where we're going to chunk the information and give the students this chunk of information, then we stop, we let them apply what they just learned over here. Then we're going to move on to the next piece of information or the next section of a chapter, for example, and if I can turn my page here and not get stuck, and then we're going to give them a new piece of information and they're going to work on a different activity over here and you're going to do the same thing for the next one and the reason i'm flipping and showing you these pages is because the next thing i want you to look for is that the activities for your students have to keep them engaged or they will not enjoy doing their interactive notebooks and so what you are looking for on the activities on this side are are they different are they using um multiple learning styles for your students. Are they, we know we have that activity, but are they keeping them engaged and they're not the same thing over and over and over again? Because again, now our students are not applying themselves. They're just going and going through the motions, cutting, pasting, gluing, cutting, pasting, and they're not applying any information. So we wanna make sure that the activities in your interactive notebook are different. They're hitting multiple learning styles over here and we're keeping our students engaged and allowing them to turn off a little bit of creative aspect while they're going through the notes and the information that they just learned. Now, I like to have a guiding question at the top of my notes up here. And this is going to kind of guide what we are learning from for the day. And then they're going to go ahead and answer somewhere on the page over here. This is optional, um, but if you look through the notes that you can definitely see what is going to be um, the focus of today's lesson, what's gonna be the focus of today's study. The other thing that I like to use, I'm gonna just kind of bring it in for you, or you can see our different colors on my notes. And this is just another feature that the students can use, which helps them organize information. When students start using science interactive notebooks, this is kind of one of their first um, attempts at organizing notes, at organizing information, and putting things down logically in order. This is helping students learn how to take information, organize it, put it on, and then use that information later when they are working on their quizzes, when they're working on uh, packets, on labs, chapter tests, that sort of thing. They should be able to come back to their notes and see the way they organize their information and be able to, again, learn from that, apply that. And so I like to use um, on my vocab words, I tell my students to go ahead and use red for the vocab words. If there's something in blue or green, that might mean, hey, this is something that we learned in previous chapters. 
So make sure you pay attention to those. I want you to think back and pull some information of what we learned in the past and how are you applying this now because we know that everything is interconnected with all the different sciences. And uh, some other things that I will use if I want students to focus on information, um, I'll put them in tables, I'll put drawings, I'll put um, labeling on here. Those can all be applied as well. So those are the interactive notebook activities. I'm just going to flip through some so you can kind of see different ideas. Now, this is in a five subject notebook. A couple tips that I like to use when I'm doing this is if you do cut out a full page, they can just glue it right in here. There are a lot of different options how you can present the notes that will um, be in a different video or you can go to my blog on Nitty Gritty Science on how you can use editable notes for your students to do that. You can apply or um, give them the information via a PowerPoint. You can do it via lecture, that sort of thing. Um, but as you can see, um, I have them only use uh, colored pencils. I have them skip a page so we don't have glue marks or pencil marks come in. Then we go to the next one over here. Again, a totally different activity for your multiple learning styles. I'll have them again skip a page. That's why I like these big five subject notebooks. And I like to use like ones like Mead that have a big sturdy cover. Again, more information. Here we have some flips. We're going to be looking at different types of stress here. And a lot of things I like to put out for students here. You can see all the different color background papers I have. This just gives them an option. I call this a little sugar and spice. So give that to the students. Let them use colored paper behind. Let them use patterned paper because they get so creative on how they put these activities together. Okay, so I hope that gives you a better understanding of what interactive notebooks and science interactive notebooks are. Please leave your questions in the comments below or you can always email me erica at nittygrittysciencecom Love to answer your questions and I hope you find the perfect science interactive notebook that works for you and your students. Take care. Bye-bye.